In this video, we're going over how to use the Revel phone for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. And in the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the T-Mobile Revel phone for beginners. Now, this will apply for the Revel 4, 4 Plus, 5G, and uh, a lot of the other Revel models as well. The interface is very similar. So I'm gonna do a general beginner's video for someone who is newer to smartphones and has this phone and would just like to learn the basics of how to use the phone. So here's a rundown of what I'll be covering in the video. So first I'll be going over how to navigate the screen and the buttons. Then I'll be going over how to make your font larger. After that, we'll go over how to make and receive phone calls. Then we'll go over how to control the volume. So how to put your phone on silent or how to make the volume louder or lower. Then from there, we'll go over how to download applications, how to set up your email so you can get the email sent right to your phone. And then we will end with how to take a picture on the phone. So that's the rundown of everything we'll be covering in the video. Make sure you watch all the way until the end so you don't miss any important tips. Uh, again, this is a beginner's guide, so we're trying to cover everything that you would need to know to begin using this phone. And after you watch the entire video, you'll wanna check out this link right here to our next video, which goes over more tips and tricks and other uh, helpful pieces of information you'd need to know to use the phone. So definitely check out that link right there. We'll also have it in the description section below. So without further ado, let's jump in and start learning about this phone. So first we're gonna just take a quick tour of the exterior buttons of the phone. Now depending on which Revel model you have, the placement might be a little different, but for this particular model, I'll be using the Revel 4 Plus. And we'll start with the left side of the phone. You'll notice there are no buttons on the left side, but there is a SIM card tray, and this is what you'll, where you'll be able to take out the SIM card if you need to take it out or swap it out. You do it on this side here. In the box of your phone, you'll have a little tool. It looks like this, and that's what would allow you to pop out the SIM card tray. It's also the slot for your micro SD card. So if you are trying to add a memory card to increase the storage, you would also do it on that side of the phone. Now on the right side of the phone, you'll find the volume up, volume down, and the power sleep button. Now tapping the power sleep button will put the phone to sleep, but the phone is still on. So if I wanna turn the phone back on, I just tap the button to wake it up. And again, you tap it once to put it to sleep, tap it again to wake it up. Now, if you hold down on the button, it'll take you to this menu, and now you can tap on the power button to actually turn the phone off, or the restart button if you just like to restart the phone. So that's how you would power off or restart if you needed to. Now, at the very top of the phone here, you'll find the headphone jack. So if you wanna plug in your uh, earbuds or your headphones, you can do it right there. And then on the bottom of the phone, you'll find the charging port. Now for this phone that uses a type C charging type. So if you ever needed to purchase a new charger, you would need to ask for a type C charger. Um, so that's just an important piece of information to know FYI. Now I just, um, unlock the phone, I did it really fast. So I'm gonna put the phone asleep again, and we're gonna show you again, uh, when you need to uh, wake up the phone, what is the process? So uh, right now the phone is asleep. I'm gonna tap the button here to turn the screen on. Take your finger, put it on the screen, and you're going to swipe up. Think of it like dragging up. So you put your finger at the bottom of the screen and just drag up and that's how you unlock the phone, okay? Now that we are in the phone, you'll notice you have three buttons at the bottom of the screen. These are your navigation buttons that will help you to navigate the phone. Now, starting with the button on the left, this is gonna be your back button, your home button, and then your recent apps button. 
Now we're gonna break down these three buttons and just walk you through how to use them, starting with the back button, which is the most important button here. So this button will always take you back to this screen. This screen is the home screen. This is where you'll find all of the little icons, which are called apps. Apps is short for applications. Think of it like a computer. Computers use software. Phones use applications or apps for short. So if you hear me say app, I'm just referring to these little icons that are on the home screen. Now, if I tap on one of these little icons or apps, it's gonna take me into that application or program. So for example, this is the internet. If I wanted to go and search the web, I would tap on this icon, which is the Google Chrome web browser. So if I tap on that, it's gonna take me into Google Chrome. And from here, I can tap in the box at the top and I can type in a website. Now, whenever you tap in an area where you can type, the keyboard will automatically pop up. So I tapped in the search area and the keyboard comes up and now I can type in, let's say AOL.com and hit the button in the bottom right corner. And now it'll search for that website. So now let's say you went to the web browser and you're here and now you wanna go back to the home screen. Well, all you have to do is tap your home button at the bottom, the little circle in the middle, and that's gonna take us back to our home screen. So no matter what you're doing, if you wanna get back to this screen, all you have to do is tap on the little white circle at the bottom, and it'll take you back to your home screen. Now, let's go over our back button. So the back button is used to navigate within the different applications. So here's a good example of this. This is the settings application where I can make changes to uh, different phone menus and things. So I'm gonna go to settings and let's say I were to go, I were just to select any, any option in the settings menu. Maybe I wanted to go to sound, right? So now I've gone deeper into the app because now I've selected an option to go to the sound menu. Now, if I wanna go back one page or one step, I'm gonna tap on the back button right here, you see? And that's gonna take me back one step. I went to sound, and now I wanna go back. I'm gonna use the back button. That's all the back button does. It just takes you back one step each time you press it. If I went to sound, and then I went to shortcut, now I've gone two steps into the app. I'm just gonna hit back button once, press it again, and now I'm back on the main screen. So all that button does is just take you back one step. Now, if I press it again, it's gonna take me out of the application because I've gone back as far as I can. So that's the home button, that's the back button. Lastly, on the right, we have the recent apps button. So whenever you open up one of these little apps, if I, for example, we opened up Google Chrome, if I now wanna go back to this screen and I tap the home button, Google Chrome is still running in the background of the phone. So to see all of the applications that are running on the phone, I'm gonna tap on the recent apps button here. And I can see, oh, I was just in the settings menu and here it is. If I wanna go back to the settings menu, I can just tap on that and it'll take me right back to settings, which is where I was. If I hit recent apps again and I swipe over, guess what? Here's Google Chrome. We opened that a few minutes ago and it's still open. So I can easily select Google Chrome and get back to looking at what I was looking at before I hit the home button. So that's all recent apps button. That's all it does. It just shows you all the applications that are running on the phone and allows you to go back to them at a later time. Now, if you're finished with the settings and you want to actually close it, stop the settings from running in the background, you can swipe up. You can put your finger on the option here and just swipe it up. And now it will close Google Chrome so it's no longer running in the background. So this is how you close running applications, just by swiping up 
after you hit the resynapse button. So that's just a quick walkthrough of the three most important uh, buttons to navigate the screen. In the next section, we're gonna navigate how to control the sound. So how to put the phone on volume, vibrate, things like that. And then after we'll go over how to make the font larger. So let's jump right into that. So the easiest way to control the sound is using the volume buttons on the right side of the phone. I can tap volume up or volume down to bring up the menu. And from here, I have a switch. Now, one disclaimer, this is gonna go away really quickly. So I'm gonna tap it. It's gonna stay on the screen only for about two seconds and then it's gonna go away. So just be mindful of that. You have to make your selection quickly. So tap volume again. This button controls, um, it controls your vibrate, silent and sound on. So watch this. This means sound is off. This means sound is on. And this means the phone is on vibrate. So you can tap this to toggle or switch between the different sound settings. Again, this means your sound is on. And sorry, I have to explain it quickly or it'll go away. This means vibrate. This means it's off. And this means your sound is on. And notice when you get to the, this option here, it'll make a clicking sound and that'll let you know that the sound is now back on. Okay. Now that's just controlling the sound settings. So for example, if you're going to go into a meeting or to a friend's house and you want to put your phone on vibrate, all you'd have to do is press the volume button and then tap it once to switch to vibrate. That's it. Okay. We're gonna turn the sound on for now. Now here is your volume toggle switch that will allow you to raise or lower the volume. And right below that, there's a settings button here. If you go all the way to the bottom and tap on that little icon, that's your sound shortcut that takes you to the sound menu. Here you can control the four different um, volume um, options on the phone. So the first option is going to be media volume. Media volume is when you're watching a video and you want to hear it louder or you're listening to music and you want the volume to be louder, you would raise the media volume. Call volume is gonna control um, how loud the call is gonna come through your phone. So when you hold the phone up to your ear, and if you want to hear the person on the other end louder, you have to raise the call volume in this option. And then in this third option, you're controlling your ringtone and notification volume. So if you want the phone to ring loud when a call is coming in, or you want to hear the sound when a text message or email comes through, you'll wanna raise ring and notification volume. And then the alarm volume is when you set an alarm and you just wanna change how loud the alarm comes through. Let's say you say, hey, I wanna be woken up at 8 a.m. This will control how loud that alarm will come through. So those are the different sound options that you'll need to navigate through. And um, that's really all you need to know is just pressing volume to bring up that menu and then making sure you're, you have that volume set appropriately for yourself. Okay, next we're gonna go over how to make the font larger to make it easier for you to read different things on the phone. So on the home screen here, we have a settings menu that you can just tap. Now, if you don't have this settings button here, no problem, you can swipe down. So start at the top of the screen and just drag down and you're gonna do that again, drag down, and you'll have the settings shortcut here. Now, once we're in the settings, we're gonna go to display, and then we'll go to advanced, right here, just tap on advanced, and go to font size. And here, you can toggle right to make the font larger. See that? And that's as large as you can get it. 
So that's one way to make the text larger. I'm gonna hit the back button to go back one step. And next, I'm gonna to go to display size. And I can also take this up one to the right, and that'll also make the size of the text larger. Now everything should show up a little larger on the phone. Now the, the text under these little applications is, is small, but if I go to Google Chrome, you'll notice everything is gonna be a bit larger now. Even the AOL is showing up larger right there. So that's how you make the font larger. You can always go back and adjust it accordingly. Um, we'll, keep the, we'll keep the font on that size for now. But again, that's how you manipulate the size of the text. Okay, for the next section, we're gonna move on and go over a section really quickly called the notification panel, or Moving on to the next section, we're now gonna go over what is called the notification panel. Go to the top of the screen and take your finger and just swipe down. And this is the section where you'll get notifications about text messages and emails and other important messages from the applications you have installed on the phone. So for example, if someone leaves you a voice message, it'll show up under notifications in this section. If someone sends you a text or an email, they'll all show up in this section. Simply by swiping down from the top, it'll bring up this menu and you can see all the different messages that have come through your phone. And um, at the moment, there's not many notifications on this phone, but let's say this was an email. If I tap on here, it would take me right to that section where I could then answer, I could read that email and I could also answer it. Now also, at the top of the screen, you'll find what are called your switches. And these switches are shortcuts to different options on the phone or different settings menus from the phone. So for example, this is your Wi-Fi switch. So if you're trying to connect your phone to the Wi-Fi at your house, You'll simply need to put your finger on the Wi-Fi button, just hold down on it, and it will take you to the Wi-Fi menu where you can then select um, your Wi-Fi network and put in your password. Let's say your, if your network was blessed 5G, you would tap on that network, and then you would be prompted to enter the password. So you would figure out whatever your password is for your Wi-Fi, and you'll type in that number and then hit connect right here. And if you're at a friend's house or at a Starbucks, you can simply ask, excuse me, what is the password to the Wi-Fi? And then you can connect just by again, swiping down, holding on that little icon or putting your finger on it for one second and then it will take you to the Wi-Fi menu. Now to the right of Wi-Fi, you'll find the little Bluetooth icon if you wanna connect a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphones or earbuds, you would just hold down on that Bluetooth icon to go to that menu. Now, if this button was gray like this, that means that that option is turned off. So for example, um, if the Wi-Fi button was gray, that would mean that Wi-Fi is turned off. But right now it's green, so we know it's turned on. This is your do not disturb button. This is your uh, flashlight. If you turn on that option, you can use your camera flash as a flashlight. And then if we swipe down again, we have a few more menu options. So we have our battery saver mode to keep your phone on longer. We have our airplane mode in case you're going on an airplane. Um, we have our auto brightness NFC. You have a uh, brightness option at the top that will make your screen brighter or darker depending on how you set it. In the next section, we're gonna go over how to make and receive phone calls. Now we'll start with answering the phone when someone calls. So first I'm gonna show you how to answer the phone when you're using the phone, when the phone is on. 
In the next section, I'll show you how to answer the phone when the screen is off because it is, uh, it's different depending on if you're using the phone or if the phone is not being used. So let's initiate a call so you can see what it looks like. You'll see a pop-up at the top of the screen right here. Here it is. Now I can tap on the green button to answer it or tap on decline to decline the call. So let's answer it, tap. The call is now answered. And then if I wanna put the phone on speaker, I can tap the speaker button. And then you can hear the phone without holding it up to your ear, okay? Now, when you're finished talking and you want to end the call, tap the red button, and that will completely end the call, okay? So that's the first way. Now, I'm going to put the screen asleep. I'm just gonna tap the power button here. And now I'm gonna initiate the same call again, and you'll see it's gonna show up different on the screen. So it's bigger, it takes up the whole screen. Now tapping won't answer the phone. You actually have to put your finger on the button and drag up. That's, gonna, that's going to answer the call for you, okay? Now I'm going to end the call, initiate it one more time, and this time I'm gonna show you how to decline the call on the home screen um, when the screen is off. So we're gonna swipe up to answer. If I want to not answer the phone, put your finger on the little button and drag it down. And that will decline the call so it won't answer, okay? So those are the two different ways you would answer the phone depending on if you're using the phone currently or if it's not being used. Next, let's go over how to make a call. So in the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll find your phone app. We'll tap on that. Um, you'll wanna then tap on the red button, the dialer. This will bring up the numbers so you can actually initiate the call. I'm gonna type in a phone number and then we're going to call that number right now. Okay, so we've entered a phone number. Notice I typed in the area code first and then the phone number. And now I'm gonna tap the green button to start the call. So it's calling right now. I can grab the phone and play it up to my ear or I can tap this to play it on speakerphone and hear it loud. There we go. And now I'm gonna tap the red button to end the call. And that's it. So that's the process to make a call. It's literally just tapping the dialer button, typing in the area code and the phone number, and that will start the call. All right. In the next section, we're gonna go over applications. We're gonna go over how to find your applications, and then we're gonna go over how to download a new application. So first, uh, on your home screen, you're gonna have a few applications that you'll be able to see, and you can swipe left and swipe right, and you may have a few more applications here. And swiping the other way, you may have a few as well. But there are more applications on the phone that you can't see. Now, to get to the full list to see all the applications that are on the phone, on the home screen, you have to do a quick motion and swipe up. This will take you to your, what is called app drawer, and it will show you all the applications that are currently installed on your phone. So you have your settings, you have your Chrome to go on the internet, you have a calculator, a calendar, a camera, Facebook. Um, these are just a few that will come pre-installed on the phone, but you might say, well, I want more. I wanna use Uber, or I wanna use DoorDash or another service, how do I get more applications? So to do that, you'll need to find the Play Store icon. It's a white icon that has a big play button and tapping here will take you to the Google Play Store. This is where you will download your different applications to use. Now one important thing to note some of you might have tapped on that play button and it may not have taken you to this screen. It might take you to a screen that asks you to sign into your Google account. If you are on that screen, 
here's what you need to do. You're in one of two situations. You either have a Google or Gmail account and you just need to sign into it. You'll see a button that says sign in and you'll tap on that button. If you don't have that sign in button, there should be a button in the bottom left corner that says create an account. You'll need to tap create an account and set up a Google account first before you're able to have access to the Google Play Store. The reason they want you to have a Google account is so that they can keep track of what apps you've downloaded. You can also add a credit card because some of the apps are not free. So it is a needed process before you get to this screen. So do that first and then this should come up. Okay, for those of you that are already on this screen, uh, I'll give you a quick tour of what the Play Store uh, is and how to navigate it. And then we'll go over how to search an application and download it. So direct your attention at the bottom of the screen and you'll see you have these four options, games, apps, movies, and books. You can, these are the four categories of things you can download in the Google Play Store. So you can look for specifically games here. You can look for apps here. You can look for movies. If you wanted to buy a movie to download, you can search for movies in here and you can search for books in this section. And under this section, they have audiobooks and comic books and a bunch of other book options as well, children's books. So all that's gonna live in this section. Now, at the top of the screen, so I just went back to the apps tab. At the top of the screen, you'll see a box, a search box. And this is where you can specifically search for an app you're looking for. For example, if you're trying to download the Uber Eats app because you want to order food and have it delivered to your house, you would need to tap in the box at the top that says search and it will bring up a keyboard that you can then use to do a search for that application. So I can type in um, Uber Eats. There's plenty of different uh, eating options. I can type in Uber space and Eats. And then I can hit the magnifying glass to do a search. Or here's another really um, easy option, which is tapping on the X and then tap on the, the microphone in the upper right corner. And I'm just gonna say Uber Eats and then it will do a search uh, based on what I say. Let's try it now. Uber Eats. So this is a really easy way to search for uh, applications. You just tap the microphone and just say the name of it and then it will automatically bring it up for you. And so now if I want to install or download the Uber Eats app on my phone, I'm just gonna tap on this green button that says install. And you'll see this little circle is spinning and that's telling you that the application is downloading to your phone. And you'll also notice that while that downloads, they'll also recommend other good applications here. So for example, Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates. These are other uh, food delivery applications. There's also the Amazon app. There's Spotify for music. There's Netflix if you wanna watch videos. You can download lots of different applications for different things you would wanna do. Okay, so now you can see our install button has changed to an open button, and that's how you know the app has successfully installed. And now we can either tap open right here to open the app, or we can tap on the home button and swipe up, and you'll now find your Uber Eats app in your app drawer section. And we can tap it here to open it up and begin using it. So that is the process to download an app. And you can go back as many times as you want and look for other apps and download them uh, based on how much storage your phone has. So now that we've gone over that, let's move on to our next section. Let's talk about sending text messages. So the first thing I want to point your attention to is the text messaging app, which is right here. And you'll notice there's a little dot in the upper right corner of the app 
right here. That dot is telling you that you have a new text message that you've received. And if you want to check it, you can simply tap on the app to see your messages. And right here you'll see, here's our new message. I can tap on it to read it. It says, hi. And if I want to respond to the message, I can simply tap in the box that says add text. And I can say hi back or how are you? How are you? This button is your send button. So after you type the message, tap the little arrow to send the message. And that's how you respond to a text message. Now, in this first example, we covered how to respond to a message someone has sent you. Next, we will go over how to send your own message. So I'm gonna hit the back button here, and one more time, to get back to the main screen of the messaging app. Now, if I wanna create a new text message, I'm gonna tap on this little plus right here. This is your button to create a new text message. Now, what'll pop up initially is gonna be a list of some of the contacts you'll see in your phone but I don't wanna type a message from a contact, I wanna just enter a phone number and then text that number. So I'm gonna tap on the dialer in the upper right corner. This will bring up the keypad and now allow me to type in a phone number. So let's enter a phone number now. And then as you can see, it says send to this number. I can either tap here or tap on the checkbox here and that will set up a new text message for me. At this point, I can begin typing my message, say hello, and then I'm gonna hit the little send button, the arrow, to send it, and now my message has been sent. Now, if you'd like to attach a picture to that message, you can tap on the little paper clip right to the left here, and I can go through and find a picture. So I took a picture of a little leaf, I'm gonna hit the little check in the upper right corner to add that picture. And I can also add more pictures as well. I can send two or three. And I have a video right here. Now, disclaimer, videos are really large files and they usually don't send well over text message. So I wouldn't encourage you to send a video. I would encourage you just to send the pictures. Now, upper right corner, tap on the little check and that will attach those three pictures to your message. Now I have these three pictures. Now you'll notice the message is not sent yet. You see these little circles with X's in them? Those will allow you to remove a picture if you've selected a picture that you don't wanna send, maybe by accident. So maybe I can say, oh, you know what? I selected the same picture three times. I'm going to hit the X on that one and the X on that one. So now I'm not sending the person the same picture three times. Now I can hit the arrow to send the picture at this point, or I can also attach a message. I can say, check this out. So I'm gonna type, check this out. And now hit the arrow to send it. And now that's how you uh, send a picture to someone. Now next, I wanna go over how to send really fun things in your text messages. So for example, there's a button that'll say GIF, G-I-F. If you tap on G-I-F, GIF, you can send one of these cool animated uh, pictures here. You can also type in the box that says search GIF, tap there first, and then type in what type of GIF you're looking for. You might, um, type in congratulations or congrats, congrats and hit the uh, magnifying glass to do a search and it will show you different gifts that you can send people. This is one of my favorites right here or this one right here. I'm just gonna tap on it. It's gonna add it to our message and now I can hit the send button to send it off. And that's how you find those cool little gifts to add to your messages. So that's how you send a text message, just that easy. Hit the back button here to get out of that message and get back to your main screen. And here you'll be able to see if anyone else has sent you a message. And um, again, create new messages all in this section. Now the one last thing I wanna show you, I'm gonna go home. Now if I were to send a text message right now, 
I want to show you what it looks like when it pops up on the screen. So I'm going to send a text from this other phone so you can see what the pop-up will look like when your phone receives the message. I'm going to hit send. You're going to see a pop-up at the top here. Give it a few seconds. There it is. It says, hi, you can tap reply and you can respond to that message right on the screen here by entering whatever you want. Hi, and hit the send button here and that will send it back. So that's also one other thing to keep in mind. Text messages sometimes will pop up on the screen and you can reply to them just by tapping on that reply button. In this section, we're gonna talk about signing into your email accounts on your phone. The average person has more than one email account and I'm gonna show you how to sign into your different email accounts. So the first thing you'll need to do, swipe up, get to your app section and find your Gmail app. Now, one important thing to explain is that um, you may have an email account that is not a Gmail. Well, guess what? One of the things that most people don't know is you can use the Gmail app to sign into other email accounts. That's right. We're going to come to the upper left corner, tap on the menu button. We're going to come to the upper right corner, tap on the little circle icon and tap on add another account and it will take you to the screen. Now some of you, when you open the app, this is the first thing you saw. And if you saw that, no problem. This is where you're gonna select the type of email account that you have so you can then sign into it. So if you have a Google account or a Gmail, you would tap here. If you have an Outlook, Hotmail or Live here, Yahoo here, an exchange, maybe a work email account or Office 360 here. Um, and if you have another type of email that you don't see on the screen, don't select the other. The other option is a little tricky to use and I'm gonna show you an easier method to sign to those other email accounts. Um, but just quickly, let's say you had a Yahoo. You would simply tap on Yahoo and it would take you to the sign-in screen and you would need to enter your email address hit next and then enter your password and that would take you into your account. Now I'm gonna hit the home button. I'm gonna show you another method to sign to your other email accounts that may not be showing up on that first screen. We're gonna tap on the Play Store icon. Now if you don't see this, you just swipe up. You should have it in this section right here. Tap on Play Store and we're gonna do a search to find other apps that are good to use for select email accounts. For example, tap on the box here where it says search. I'm going to type in at, so hit the number button in the bottom left corner. Find your at symbol. And then you'll type in the type of email address that you have. So for example, if you have an AOL email account, you can type in at AOL.com. If you have an SBCglobal.net, you would type in SBCglobal.net and then you do a search. As you can see, they're already showing up in our search for me. It may not show up for you. No problem. If it doesn't, just hit the ABC button and start typing in the type of email address that you have. I'm, I'm then going to tap AOL.com to do the search. And guess what? There is an AOL app I can download that will allow me to sign into my AOL email nice and easy. You'll tap the install button. I've already installed the app on this phone, so my green button just says open, and I would just tap on open. And from here, I would have an option to sign to my email. Now in this case, the app first takes you to this screen. I would have to tap on inbox, and then it should ask me to enter my username or my email address, hit next, then hit my password. Now, let's go back to the Play Store again. I'm gonna hit my recent apps button here. I'm gonna to swipe to the right, go back to my 
um, Play Store app. Now, I can tap in the box here and I can delete this, hit an X, tap the number button in the bottom left corner and I can also hit the at and then do a search for my SBC Global, SBC Global.net and do a search for that. And now it's gonna show me a list of applications I can use to sign into that particular email type. One app I can recommend that's really good is the Yahoo Mail app or just the plain email fast and secure app here. You would tap install. I've already installed it, so I'm just gonna tap open. And then from here, I can type in my email address and my password to sign to my sbcglobal.net. You would tap add other account here. And then you can go through the options here to see, okay, do I see my email address? If you don't, you'll tap other. And then I can type in sbcglobal.net, the password, and then tap login. So those are a few different ways for you to sign into your email accounts on your phone and then be able to check those emails. They'll all start showing up once you sign into that email account. Next, we're gonna talk about using the camera. All you're gonna do is tap on the camera icon on your home screen. And here, we can see we're in the camera and we have some options here. Pro, video, auto, portrait, panoramic or pano. If I just wanna take a picture, I wanna make sure I'm in the auto mode. So auto will be a different color. And I'm just gonna point and tap on the little white button to snap the picture, just like that, okay? Now, if I wanna take a video, I'm gonna tap on video. Notice the button is now turned red, and now I'm gonna tap the red button and start recording my video. And if I wanna take a uh, picture while I record the video, I'm gonna tap on the camera to the left and it will take snapshots while I'm recording the video. Tap the red button when you're ready to stop. And we've now just taken a picture and a video. Now, if you wanna switch that camera and you wanna take a selfie, you're gonna tap on this button here. This will rotate you to the front camera. There you go. Now you can take a selfie if you'd like. And now if I wanna see the pictures I took, I'm gonna tap on this little icon in the uh, bottom left corner. And here I can swipe through, there's my video, I can swipe left, there's one of my pictures, keep swiping. And that's how you see the pictures that we just took in that section. Those are the basics of the camera. One last thing I'll show you is if you want to zoom in on something, let's say I have this, uh, leaf right here and I want to zoom I can simply take two fingers and I'm just going to put them on the screen and pinch out and that will allow me to zoom see that now if I want to zoom the other way I'm going to pinch in just like this there you go and that's how you take a picture and use the basic functions of the camera I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please hit that like button down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below if the video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.